Hello and welcome to the 4-4 video part 2. Um, so now we're going to actually solve some quadratics. Uh, if you remember from the, let's see, was it the 4-6 quadratic formula problems? Um, the the uh, like matching time thing and I discussed the difference between your real and imaginary numbers. Well, this is where it came. Um, but we hadn't quite done imaginary yet, so there we go. What we're going to do is start by solving normally. You know how to solve this. Let's start by subtracting 100. 4x squared equals negative 100. I'm trying to get x by itself, so next I'm going to divide by 4. And now to get x by itself, I'm going to do the square root, and I find that I have an issue. x equals... I have this negative, so kind of like I did above, I'm going to divide this to be that negative 1 and the 25. And the good news is 25 actually is one of my square numbers. So this is going to be I, oh, hang on a second, 25. Couldn't that have been a positive or negative 5, right? Because negative 5 squared is a positive 25, but positive 5 squared is positive 25. So my answer is going to be x equals the positive or negative 5i. Let's try another. Subtract 4. x squared equals negative 4 if I go to do the square root. Let's see, that's going to be a negative 1 and a 4. So that's going to be i. And 4, the square root of 4 is a positive or negative 2. So my answer is x equals the positive negative 2i, just like that. Okay, so next let's check out complex numbers. A complex number is any number that can be written in the form a plus bi. a is going to be a real number, so like 5, whereas the bi is going to be that imaginary number. Um, all of my answers up here were those imaginary number pieces. So, um, A is going to be called the real part, B is going to be called the Im imaginary part. We can solve equations, and here's what you need to know. Maybe I'm going to write this. Set real equal to real. Set imaginary equal to imaginary. So you're going to have two equations with two answers. So when I look up here, the real stuff is anything that doesn't have an I immediately connected to it. So when I look at what has an I, this I is multiplying the parentheses. So that's the imaginary stuff. Okay, more imaginary stuff right there. And then here is the the real then. So make two equations from that. 5x plus 1 equals 2x minus 2. You can solve that. That's super easy. Minus 2x minus 2x 3x. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1 while I'm at it. Equals negative 3x equals negative 1. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the imaginary part. 3 plus 2y, parentheses i, equals y minus 6, parentheses i. And so what I notice on the imaginary part is if I divide by i to try and get it to cancel away, it's going to cancel off of both sides, and now I'm just left with plain, boring numbers and variables that should be pretty easy to solve. Okay, so y equals negative 9. Both of these are your answers. They both count. All right, and we'll do two more examples, and then we'll pause this video for here. So next, what we're going to check out is adding and subtracting these. Um, basically, treat i like an x. And what that means is, you know, when we multiplied them, you turned it into a squared, or basically combining like terms. So if I have two parentheses being added together, then the parentheses are actually kind of useless, right? 
So what I really have is negative 2 plus 5i plus 1 minus 7i. It's saying I have this complex number being added to this complex number. That's what they're doing. And now add the thing, add like terms. That's all you're doing is adding like terms. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And 5i minus 7i is negative 2i. Notice again, with complex numbers, I write that in the form a plus bi. So it's the uh, regular number and then the imaginary number, the real number and then the imaginary number. When it comes to subtracting, really it's the same. The only catch is that... Um, you know, you might distribute the negative sign to remember that you're subtracting. Um, so it's like I'm distributing a negative 1. It's going to be a positive 1 and then a negative 2i. So what I have now is 4 plus 6i plus 1 minus 2i. Combine like terms. like so. Alright, stay tuned for part three.